is Brennan Davis from Bedrock Games and the Bedrock Blog, and I hope to have some of my movie reviews up in the coming week. I have been very busy working on Wandering Heroes of Orgagate, doing modules and supplements and things like that, so I haven't had as much time to do my video reviews, and I, uh, I'm hoping to get some up uh, very shortly. In the meantime, I have a Brave Archer review, which you can look at at the Shaw Brothers Universe website. I will link to it below, but you can just go to Shaw Brothers and you know check through and you'll, you'll be able to find it there. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, an interesting book that I found called Bing, From Farmer's Son to Magistrate in Han, China. It's written by Michael Lowe. When this first came out, which I think was in 2011, I saw it, I saw the cover. I assumed this was like a literary fiction sort of a deal. I didn't think it was any kind of uh, attempt at, at, at history. I, you know, I thought at, at most it was going to be a, a historical novel. I'll occasionally read historical novels, but I'm not generally as much a fan of them as I am of just straight history books. And it turned out this is actually kind of in between. This is, this is, uh, it's, it's more of a, it's a cross between a micro history and a, an historical fiction, but it's historical fiction that's very much guided by the evidence and written by somebody that understands the period and is a, um, you know, is like a professional lecturer uh, at, on, on the subject. Uh, in fact, he's written another book called uh, Everyday Life in Early uh, Imperial China. So, uh, which, which also is quite good. Uh, but, but this book, Bing, uh, basically what it does is he creates a fictional character, sort of inspired by someone who existed in history. Uh, and then, and then using uh, what he knows about the period about Han China, and 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 looking at you know specific pieces of evidence, he he creates a, you know a, a, a narrative of of Bing's life uh, from when he starts as a farmer's son to being conscripted into the labor force, then conscripted into the military. Uh, you know, then becoming a servant in the household of an aristocrat, then becoming a uh, uh, sort of uh, falling in with a merchant and studying under him and seeming to become a merchant. But then he decides to uh, study under a, uh, a former official who's willing to train him and he takes the exams and he becomes a uh, an official. He gets assigned to various posts. He gets married and then he's finally made the magistrate of a district. And eventually he uh, he retires, and so we get sort of a uh, a complete view of, of this fictional character's life, but it's all very informed by by real uh, by real details, and the and the and, and it's and, and the thing that's kind of nice about it is by going through all of these different occupations, you get a sense of you know well what was daily life like for a farmer, or what was daily life like for a magistrate. You can read a book like this and get that too, but. Uh, something about having the character, you know, sort of immersing you in the shoes of the character really forces you to see not just, you know, what they used for, uh, you know, like uh, to issue orders or, or, or what the daily uh, responsibilities of the magistrate of a district were. You kind of get to see things in real time. Now, it's imagined real time because the, the author has to imagine these things. But because it's written by an author who has the expertise and he's basing it on real things, it just feels a little bit more plausible. And I think particularly for gamers, that's very useful. One of the reasons why I like micro history is that micro history really uh, puts you in the shoes of, 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 of people experiencing events. And that's a great way to sort of see what a what a what what institutions might have looked like on the street level? Uh, I don't you know. A lot, I'm sure a lot of people here are familiar with microhistory. If you're not, it's basically just the the study of 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 really narrow events or circumstances or or you know maybe even just like a single day in like a, a village in a particular region, uh, so that you get just this really uh, focused. Uh, analysis of 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 
of the smallest parts of history possible. So like a really famous one is um, uh, The Cheese and the Worms uh, by Carlo Ginsberg. Uh, another one is The Bewitching of Anne Gunther. And, you know, the, the, I, I happen to like micro history. I also happen to like macro history. And I think when you combine the two, you get a really uh, good overview of things. So, um, so anyways, this is a mic. This is, it feels like a micro history. It immerses you in the, in the shoes of this character, Bing. Um, granted, it's not a single event. It's the guy's entire lifetime, but but I think because it, with each step, you're getting sort of a sense of, okay, this is what he has to deal with when he's on the farm. This is what he has to deal with when he's, you know, a merchant. Uh, here's what he's doing when he's a magistrate. So they show him, you know, sort of, in, you know, you know, inspecting things and, 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 and encountering problems. You know, there's like, you know, like, for example, there might be uh, a shortfall of the taxes and he has to find out why. So it just, it just, I don't know, I found it very, very helpful as a game master who runs settings that are based pretty much on historical, uh, you know, historical places, even when it's, you know, not really historical, it's a, um, maybe like a, a fantasy analog or something, but I'm drawing on history in different ways. I find this incredibly useful. So for my Ogre Gate game, I, I find it super helpful, uh, even though that's not actual historical China, uh, to, to draw on material like this. It, re it really can sort of help you see, oh, here's an interesting complication. Now, one thing this is not, it is not a novel. It is not written uh, with the intent of, uh, of having like a literary style plot. All of the plot developments in here are fairly mundane. Some of them are interesting, but they're, they're plausible. And each chapter has a series of endnotes. So he kind of indicates to you, well, this is stuff that I just invented based on what I thought might happen here, but this is based on on this bit of evidence here. At one point, he even has a passing remark about there were herbs that the character saw on the market. And in the notes in the first chapter here, he says that you know that he wasn't certain that that would have been the case, but uh, but he but he added it uh, anyway. So I liked. I like those kinds of endnotes in books. I really like having footnotes in books. So, um, so yeah, so this was a, 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 a really, I don't know, a really clever little book. I've, I've seen books like this, but this one really kind of straddles the line between it. Fe it feels a lot more like a proper history book to me, uh, especially with the endnotes and the way that he's writing, uh, you just get a sense, you, you know, that he's working off of, um, off of evidence that he has available of known events of, um, of real information. And some of it I'm sure might be, uh, you know, again, I'm not, I'm not an expert in the, in, uh, you know, Han China. So I'm sure, uh, people that know more than me can weigh in on, on, on the sort of the validity of the painter, uh, the picture he paints, but a lot of it seemed very, uh, you know, reliable for, to my eyes and, and reliable enough for a game. If I'm running a game, this was uh, this is a very good resource. If I was a novelist writing a book set in this period, I would definitely pick this up. I think it would be very helpful. Even if you have to double check some of the facts, uh, it's just a really great way to put you in the shoes of a character and see things. And because he's not trying to weave a story, he, he's able to really give you a tour of everything. Um, the, you know, I read a book, I don't remember the name of it, but it was something along the lines of you know, how to survive in Rome on a certain number of denarii a day. I'll have to track down a link and post it below. But that was, that was like a, um, that was an interesting book that was presented as almost like a tourist guide to ancient Rome. Like here's, here's a book that you would take with you if you were going to go visit ancient Rome and it gives you all the sites and things like that. And I, I, I love that book. I thought it was, a, um, I thought it was a really creative way to, to present ancient Roman life. And this is very similar to that. This, this, this is something that I, uh, uh, I wish I had read years ago, uh, when it came out and it's really short. It's only like 180 pages or so. And it's, uh, it's, 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 a, you know, each chapter is, 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 is fairly easy to read. There's nothing terribly complex here. Um, but I, I, I really, I really like this book and it really got me thinking as a gamer, my measure for how good something is as a source of inspiration is, is whether I start getting ideas while I'm reading it and whether I start thinking about, uh, 
you know, all kinds of, uh, um, you know, like things to throw at my players, you know. So this, as I was reading, I was like, oh, yeah, I could, uh, you know, there's something to put on an encounter table or there's something that might happen when the players are traveling to an inn. So uh, it, 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 in a way, it almost read, to me, it read like uh, uh, if, a, if a historian had written the life of his player characters in a game set in ancient China. That was sort of uh, how it felt to me. It felt, it felt fairly informed. It felt like it was um, uh, breathing life into stuff that I've read in books like this but sort of showing how the pieces would have fit together. So, uh, so again, and again, there's an imaginative leap involved, but, uh, but it's an imaginative leap that's tethered to, you know, the, the evidence that he can, can bring to the table. And, and when he deviates from the evidence, he tells you. So, uh, so again, I think, I think it's, uh, you know, one of, one of my concerns when I read historical literature, like a, like a, a novel set in history is is the uh, is how misled I'm how, how misled I'm being by the by the author. Not that the author is malicious intent to do that, but you just never know how you know unless you know the period well. You know you you, you sometimes can be uncertain, and I'm always worried about picking up something from a from a movie set in a historical period or a book set in a historical period that wasn't actually history. Um, so this happened with one of my favorite movies, Amadeus. I, I was walking around with all kinds of misconceptions about the life of Mozart. Um, and it's a great movie, but, uh, but it's always a concern of mine. And I didn't feel like I had as much of this concern with this book. So, all right, I will, I will let you go. I'm going to be on again talking about some other things. I have some subjects I want to discuss on the video blog, but I'm also going to uh, be back on with my reviews. And until then, you know, go to the Shaw Brothers Universe site and you can, you can check me out. All right. I will talk to you later.